Now, there are two kinds of nature photography. The first type of nature photography is what we call underwater photography. Underwater photography takes fishes and other marine mammals, shipwrecks, submerged cave systems, underwater landscapes, and portraits of co-divers as subjects. Here are some examples of underwater photographs. The first one is from photographer Christine Wren. This stunning photograph is still from the same photographer. And this last underwater photograph is from photographer Eduardo Acevedo. The second type of nature photography is wildlife photography. Wildlife photography takes land animals most of the time, which are found in the wild as subjects. Now here are examples of wildlife photographs. This first example is the 2014 National Geographic Wildlife Photographer of the Year winning photo. The shot above was taken by photographer Hassan Baglar at Nicosia, Cyprus of two praying mantis who look a lot like flamenco dancers and who look a lot like smiling. The next photo is the 2017 National Geographic Wildlife Photographer of the Year winning photo. Mr. Laman, a Singaporean past award winner in the competition, spent three days climbing and setting up cameras so they could be triggered remotely. And after three days, got the winning photo entitled Entwined Lives. Here is a sneak peek inside the life of a wildlife photographer. This bear is coming right up to me unfortunately it ignores the seal's breathing hole and heads straight for me she's coming closer and closer oh my god she is enormous she's she was really is why i've come here to see these animals to get to understand them see them up close Hey, bear. Oh, my God. She's right here. Hey, bear. The bear's nose is thousands of times more powerful than mine. It's gathering information before it approaches, like it would when stalking a seal. My scent is strongest at the weakest point, the door. Yeah, that door's not good. It's systematically trying from all angles. Being this close, you get an appreciation for what this animal is. It is one of the most powerful animals on the planet, one of the most intimidating animals on the planet, and one of the few animals that actually see us as food. The bear's nose has led it to a gap. You can sniff me, gosh, I could have actually touched his nose. Is that giving a little? She's feeling the pressure there, she can actually feel like that perspex is flexing. She's trying to see if she can crawl through it, she's trying to see if she can bite through it. It's getting a little bit hairy in here. I can feel that he's just pushing all his weight. Oh, not sure if I like that. Not sure if that's good. Our best bet 
would be to get her full weight on top of it, just like she does when she's breaking into seal layers, and push. Okay, don't go on top. On top's dangerous. Look, it's just towering above me. If I was to be standing side by side with this animal, it would be about seven feet tall. Oh, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Hey, bear. Every time she pushes, every time she exerts a little bit of force, she's using up calories. Is there anything worth eating here? Is there anything worth using up energy for? Inside there is, definitely. Oh, me. Once it realises it's too difficult to get in, the polar bear moves off. Um, definitely at this point, my fear far outweighs my fascination. This is closer to a polar bear than I ever, ever imagined I'd ever get. That's not something I'm going to want to do again in a hurry. Definitely not. The next type of photography is nude photography. Nude photograph is any photograph which contains an image of a nude or semi-nude person as its subject. Now, what is the difference between nude photography, glamour photography, and pornographic photography? Now, when we say nude photography, the image is uh, or contains a nude or semi-nude person as its subject. Aside from that, the facial and body expressions of the subject does not necessarily have to be seductive or erotic. Now, when we say glamour photography, it also contains an image of a nude or a semi-nude person as its subject. But the facial and the body expressions of the subject should be erotic or seductive. Now, what are examples of glamour photographs? Those that you can find in Playboy magazine, or FHM magazines. Those are examples of glamour photographs. Now, when we say pornographic photography, it is sexually explicit in nature. When we say sexually explicit, the private parts of the person should be seen. Now, if you would look at some nude photographs or glamour photographs, the private parts are covered, but in pornographic photography, they should be seen and the facial and body expressions should be erotic or seductive. Here is one of the earliest examples of nude photographs. It is entitled Nude by Gaudencio Marconi in 1841. Another example of nude photograph is entitled Virginia Biddle by Alfred Shenny Johnson in 1927. The next type of photography is forensic photography. Now, in forensic photography, it is also known as crime scene photography. It is an activity that records the initial appearance of the crime scene and physical evidence in order to provide a permanent record for the course. Now, what makes forensic photography different from, let's say, landscape photography or nude photography? In forensic photography, you cannot alter the position of your subject. You cannot change the lighting uh, that is placed upon your subject. Because once you do that, you are tampering with evidence and you are liable already with the law. The main uh, idea in forensic photography is to be able to capture the information or the evidence as realistically as possible. Okay? It depends on what you have seen on the crime scene itself. The last type of photography is what we call still life photography. Now, still life photography is a genre of photography used for the depiction of inanimate subject matter, typically a small group of objects. Now, what makes still life photography different from portrait or nature photography? 
Now, for example, if you want to take a photo of the sunset, you cannot control the time and pause the setting of the sun, right? Now, in still life photography, you have control on the lighting and the placement of the subjects because what you shoot are inanimate subjects. Class, thank you for listening and I will see you on our next discussion. Please do not forget to check the activity for Chapter 8, Photography. It is already posted in your respective Google Classrooms.